Let's take a quick look at the DI Optical RV-1. This is an optic that comes from South Korea. This company has been on the market for about a year and a half to maybe two years. And I've been looking around for reviews for this optic but just haven't found too many other than user reviews off of individual websites. I wanted to take a look at it, look at it with a professional review or a blogger type review and uh, give you my feedback. So out of the box, uh, I was really happy. At 229, this optic seems to have a lot going for it. This optic is made of one stout piece of solid aluminum. I don't know if it's cast or if it's just machined from a, from a block of aluminum. I have no idea. But look at this. This is all aluminum. Anodized black. It's a nice flat black. And it's one piece. This doesn't even look like it's, it's separate. This looks like it's completely part of the body. And perhaps all the lenses and whatever electronics are inserted through the front, which is threaded and threaded for a, um, an anti-glare device as well. But I don't see really any cheapness here. This body, at least, is stout. It's one heck of a stout piece of equipment. We have a double-A battery here on the side. Okay, I don't need to unscrew that. It's just a simple double-A. The manual advertises 10,000 hours of battery life at the medium setting. However, online, the literature says 20,000 hours at the medium setting. So there's some discrepancy there from what the website says to what the manual says. So we'll have to clarify that with DI Optical. The caps here are tethered. They are coin adjustable. Just a little slot. And it does come with a tool which seems a little unnecessary because these are dime adjustable. Uh, however, the clicks are solid. They are one MOA, however, per click. So that's a little rough for some shooters. Not everybody wants to, um, you know, more people are going to want half MOA at least. However, for a red dot, let's say I'm off an inch, I'll fix it by going over a click. If I'm off half an inch, well, I'll always be off half an inch, but for a red dot, that's not my biggest concern. Um, I'd be more upset if I had a precision optic um, that was one MOA. Half MOA is good enough for me. For the red dots, one MOA is good enough for me. So we have some night vision settings as well where we can't actually see anything, okay? This uh, going through to four clicks before we start to see the red dot. And then we have our daylight settings. That's six clicks past the night vision. Pretty bright. It is not anything I'm going to question. It's really a good daylight bright red dot. I don't have much to say about the um, electronics package at this point. I haven't tested it, haven't dunked it. Uh, so we're going to do that review in the future. But just as a first impression, I want you to take a look at this thing. It's MIL uh, 810G, MIL standard 810G qualified. Uh, so we have some specifications that they try to adhere to for the environment test. Minus 22 uh, to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. That's excellent operating temp range. Weight about 14 ounces. It's a standard 30 millimeter tube, 1.5 MOA dot, parallax free of course, it's a red dot. Uh, it says there's seven steps, I may have miscounted, seven steps for daytime, three steps for night vision, one step off, 11 position rheostat. The rail is a mill standard 1913 Picatinny, however it can be replaced with an arms number 17 style um, uh, mount if you want to take that off. Allen keys included so that's pretty good, and really, I'm going to point people to this. This seems substantial. So long as the optics package holds together, this optic seems to be the best budget red dot, which, which is a full-size tube, mind you, that, that I can think of. If this electronics package holds up, and this can take the abuse, there's no other choice. Aimpoint better watch out at this point, because this thing is affordable. Again, 229 and uh, rugged. It definitely looks the part. I mean, I'm serious. This thing is heavy. It's 14 ounces. It's stout. If you're looking for a budget red dot, I'm going to recommend this over your primary arms, over your vortex. This just blows them out of the water. I'm really impressed. Um, so again, follow the, follow the blog, the new rifleman.com. There we'll see if it actually holds up over the long term. Um, no, no, no real tint that I noticed. There is the emitter that you can see there sometimes. But in general, mounting this forward, you're not going to see too much in the way of a, that emitter blocking your view. Really nice optic. It's also lower third co-witness, by the way. 
so do take a look at the RV1 and if you have one let me know if you've had any trouble with it or if you are yourself impressed with the value I certainly am so here we're gonna run this for the next few months and see how it does this is Brian for the new rifleman signing out